Welcome to part two of edition 62 of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Hope um, you enjoyed the first one. I want to kind of step forward, step on from what I was just finishing discussing at the end of the, the first video here. A um, couple, of, couple of things I want to say actually, by the way, a, a couple of comments coming through with regards to why these videos are only 15 minutes long. I actually do a stick to the 15 minutes for a reason because I think once you go beyond 15 minutes sometimes you can start to kind of drift off in terms of concentration so if I keep the video to 15 minutes it kind of holds interest and attention that little bit more rightly or wrongly that's something that I've kind of stuck to over the last couple of years because I feel once the video goes beyond 15 minutes people do start to kind of lose a little bit of concentration or even interest here so it's kind of a short and sweet type um philosophy that i've got with regards to the videos here but this i want to touch on something here so i just made mention warmest september on record it was you know the warmest you know july august as well on record globally and of course with all these records falling you're asking the question what is the cause and we had a very unusual sharp spike during the month of September in particular globally. Now, that could be attributed to several things. Of course, carbon dioxide is one aspect, but it doesn't explain, even if you are, um, you know, of, a, of the belief that carbon dioxide is the cause of warming of the planet here. Um, you know, if you've watched my videos enough, you know my, my thoughts with regards to that. I think there is, um, you know, a, a good counter argument to that CO two, um, um, idea. But certainly with regards to the the you know the cause in, in this increase in warming, you know, it, the oceans are one aspect. Uh, with regards to the warming, you can see here that we are seeing areas of cooling taking place versus warming, and you only have to look back at the past year to see that we're not just continuously seeing the planet warm up in terms of the oceans and the atmosphere. So we are seeing this kind of waxing and waning in terms of sea surface temperatures, uh, warming versus cooling, um, but but the atmosphere continues to increase in temperature. And what is causing that? That is the good question here. So, of course, we are seeing a greater increase in water uh, column, you know, within the atmosphere as well. Now that is likely down to several things. Warmer overall oceans release more moisture into the atmosphere. Also the transition from a three year La Nina into an El Nino, that is gonna definitely be a good contributing factor. I know there's conflicting ideas with regards to the Tonga Hunga volcanic eruption back in January, 2022. That released a vast amount of moisture into the atmosphere. But I also want to touch on the fact that we did see quite a blocky type summer. Now, the NAO was primarily negative from the middle of June, even be, be, before that, you know, all the way right through till now, we've seen a predominantly negative NAO, which is very interesting indeed. Now, we did see that strong pulse of Manjulian oscillation in the West Pacific during July and August. I think that in turn helped uh, you know, enhance the, the, the trough over the UK and Ireland, bringing such a wet mid and second half of the summer season. I think we're also seeing the response to that. We're seeing the only strong positive in the NAO, you know, for the last several months has been during early September. And of course, we had record breaking warm temperatures here. But look at how negative it's been during the second half of September and through all the way through to week one of october here and you can see here with regards to this is the the 500 millibar geopotential height anomalies for the june through august period notice the amount of blocking over the north atlantic greenland the high latitudes now if we look at the arctic oscillation interesting enough it has been a little bit more neutral we've had spells of positive we've had spells of negative but not anywhere near as prominent as the nao being negative during the course of the summer season and even beyond that here so my point is with with regards to the idea of you know the increase in moisture within the atmosphere and the, the ongoing warming taking place around the world and these records falling 
my my concept would be the strong blocking over the Arctic region, but also within the middle latitude region, we'll have a lot of heat wave conditions over Europe, over parts of North America. Asia, we've seen, of course, record breaking warm temperatures here. Have we increased the strength of that subtropical ridge and then forced it a little bit further north than usual, but also that block over the high latitude region versus a strong subtropical high? We then locked in place some of these kind of troughs that enhanced rainfall, for example, Greece, Libya, east coast of the United States. New England has had a very, very wet summer indeed. And other parts of the world, we're seeing flooding conditions as well. So are we increasing the, Hadley, the strength of the Hadley cell, shifting it slightly further north? But also in turn, we're seeing a lot of blocking over the top of the world as well. What's the cause of that? Is it? you know, um, CO2 all of a sudden enhancing blocking over the high latitudes. I don't believe it is. There's something going on here that's causing this um, exceptional blocking. Is it the solar cycle, for example? It looks as if we're, um, of course, we are approaching the maximum of solar cycle 25 over the next 12 to 24 months. So we are increasing the strength of the sun. That could be having an impact as well. And then, of course, I personally believe that that release of, of enhanced moisture, that added boost, so instead of it just being the warm oceans, we've got that added boost in that volcanic eruption underneath the water, pumping tremendous amounts of moisture into the atmosphere and then enhancing the strength. You know, a year, a year and a half, nearly two years down the line, we're seeing the response, the atmospheric response to that added injection of moisture from ocean into the atmosphere here. So I personally think there's a possibility that we've increased that blocking during the, the summer season. Um, and really this year, 2023, has been a very negative NAO signal. The question that I would ask is what happens as we move towards the summer, uh, the winter season, sorry. But you can see here the strong negative extend from the Azores into the UK. This is, of course, the mean for July, June through August. This is the mean 500 millibar potential anomalies here. But notice the strong block over and just to the south of Greenland. We've got another block over Svalbard. We've got another uh, core of, uh, you know, anomalous uh, high pressure on the North American side of the Arctic region here. We've got a negative over the east coast of uh, Far East Russia as well. You notice here the strength of the block. Over Mexico, we've got a strong uh, positive here over the Mediterranean basin here, trapped in between those positive anomalies, high latitude versus low latitude. We've got that negative anomaly. Notice here the east coast of North America um, has, has that negative trapped between those two um, uh, anomalous high pressure systems here. So is that some sort of an atmospheric response to this here? record amounts of water within the atmosphere in response to the Tonga Hunga volcanic eruption here and of course um, enhanced further by warm waters over the West Indian Ocean and also the Pacific Ocean. So the core of warmest water over the ocean, Indian Ocean is in the West, hence why we've got enhanced moisture within the atmosphere. We've got enhanced moisture through the equatorial region of Africa. A good part of Africa is actually wet than average and of course, we've got the strong warming of the Pacific Ocean, so we're increasing the moisture here. But notice here up across far North America, northern portions of uh, of Greenland here and Europe and the UK and Ireland, we've got a lot of, um, uh, you know, wetter than average um, air mass here, which is very, very interesting indeed. So let's move on. This was the scene at um, on the A78 northbound near the IBM um, complex in Inverclyde. So this is uh, to the west of Glasgow, where we had 100, 150 millimetres of rain in the wettest areas of the South Highlands. That Dalmally area between Oban and, um, you know, and, and points just to the east had the core of heaviest rain during the course of yesterday. We had heavy rain the day before. We had heavy rain even this morning as well. And of course, this is the next region uh, within the Northern Hemisphere to see heavy rainfall. That tropical connection driving heat out of the tropics 
and moving into the temperate region here and of course a lot of issues with regards to flooding due to this this was the scene here near king Usi. this is the a9 this is a region quite susceptible to flooding generally speaking anyway but an incredible uh, scene here on the a9 not that far to the south of aviemore here uh, yesterday afternoon here so let's have a look and see what extremes have been taking place um, in recent times so we had of course a typhoon that went ashore just to the southeast corner of taiwan there was a small little island here that recorded a wind gust of 213 miles per hour and that is in terms of an anemometer reading the wind gust so an actual piece of equipment on land rather than being satellite estimation we had a wind gust of of 213 miles an hour on the tiny little island just off the southeast coast of taiwan here beaten only by the 231 mile per hour gust at mount washington back in 1934 and uh, barrow island uh, with typhoon olivia it's actually cyclone olivia and it produced a wind gust of an astonishing 253 miles per hour back on april 10th 1996 here so a remarkable wind gust reported by this west pacific typhoon back in the 4th of october here um so pretty remarkable stuff indeed so while you might think that uh, the ice is all melting away in antarctica very cold conditions at Vostok station on october 7th uh, the minimum temperature was minus 74.9 celsius if it is not an algorithm error this is a seasonal seasonal monthly minimum in antarctica here so very impressive cold we continue to skip through Thierry Goose's interest in global facts here. Peru has been continuing to see remarkable warm temperatures here. We did see an all-time record in the last couple of weeks in Peru. And of course, this is a byproduct of the El Nino, of course. Record-breaking warm temperatures in the Middle East. We've seen temperatures in the mid to even high 40s in a region that, of course, should be cooling down. Record-breaking warm conditions in eastern portions of uh, Canada as well as of course europe in recent times all-time record october temperatures achieved in several countries uh, including spain we've seen it in france poland austria um has seen remarkable warm temperatures for um early portions of october here we also seen a temperature of 46.8 celsius in i believe iran new october record for Iran, highest temperature ever recorded so late for the Northern Hemisphere, uh, which is, uh, of course, pretty impressive stuff here. We continue to skip on and see what records have been achieved in recent times here. 46.6 um, achieved um, back, I think, the previous re beating the previous record set in 2021 um, here. Okay, so I think I've covered more than enough here, of course, with the two editions of the Global Weather Report for today. Stay tuned this upcoming week here. More on El Nino, Indian Ocean Dipole, winter chat, looking at long-range models. So there's plenty of reason to stick around here. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you again tomorrow with more weather to speak about, of course. Closing that. Remarkable contrast in temperature anomalies over the UK during the course of yesterday. Temperatures six below average across the north versus nine above average across the south. We'll look at all the details in terms of rainfall totals, impacts to infrastructure around Scotland with the heavy rainfall. How warm did it get across the southeast of the UK over the course of the weekend? All that are coming up in tomorrow's video, so stay tuned and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye for now.